Today, more than 2 billion people live in the semi-arid regions of Asia and Africa. Home to a fourth of the world's population these drylands exhibit some of the most unforgiving and harshest conditions to be found anywhere on the planet. The vast majority who reside in these regions, rely on agriculture for their survival, with 754 million living below the official poverty line. Crops on which these regions depend for food security are constantly beset by changing climates, extreme weather events such as droughts to nutrient-depleted soils, and environmental degradation. Development progress is further thwarted in many cases, by a lack of information, market access, conflict, non-inclusive economic institutions, weak governance structures, and limited state support. Resultantly, those who call the semi-arid regions home, tragically remain the poorest, the hungriest the most nutritionally insecure, and the most marginalized in the world. But it does not have to be like this. Change happens when institutions and nations of goodwill coalesce around a concern for common humanity in which a brighter future is created for all. And thus begins, the story of ICRASAT, the International Crops Research Institute for the Semi-Arid Tropics. ICRASAT was established in 1972, by a memorandum of agreement between the Consultative Group on International Agricultural Research and the Government of India. India's Green Revolution started in the 1960s and initial discussions were held for the establishment of a dedicated sorghum institute in the country. This concept later evolved into creating an international crops research institute for the semi-arid tropics for key dryland crops. The foundation stone for Ikrasat campus was laid by the then Prime Minister of India, Mrs. Indira Gandhi, on the 11th of January 1975. Today, Ikrasat is the only International Agricultural Research Center IARC, with its headquarters in India with a mission to reduce poverty, hunger, malnutrition, and environmental degradation in the drylands. It is recognized as the premier global research organization for dryland farming having developed a number of scientific world firsts and interventions that continue to transform the lives of the poorest of the poor. 50 Years of Innovation For five decades the journey of Ikrasat has been defined by innovation that constantly pushes the boundaries of possibility. Ikrasat's core strength lies in its world-class research and scientific innovations with a focus on developing productive, climate-smart, and nutritious legume and cereal crops critical to the drylands, comprising chickpea, pigeonpea, groundnut, pearl millet, sorghum, finger millet, and small millets. 1970s The Beginnings Ikrasat scientists develop varieties, hybrids, and breeding lines that resist pests and diseases, and also develop technologies that can be used by dryland farmers. Agronomic experiments mark the beginning of the Institute's Farming Systems Research Program. These experiments were subsequently tested in watersheds from a land and water management perspective. Later came the intercropping perspective to watersheds, which was hard to promote in the 70s but became very popular in the 90s. The Genetic Resources Unit is developed as a global repository for Ikrasat's crop germ plasms. This leads to fully-fledged gene banks being established in India and others in Niger, Kenya, and Zimbabwe. Ikrasat designs experimental plots for dry land cereals and legumes while initiating village-level studies incorporating cultural context, gender, nutrition, social inclusivity, and markets. Ikrasat pioneers aflatoxin research in groundnuts leading to heightened awareness on its post-harvest management to prevent adverse impacts on human health. Ikrasat conducts the first Farmer's Day convening farmers around its variety trials. The 1980s, an era of excellence and expansion. The first Ikrasat sorghum and pearl millet varieties are released for farmers in Sudan. Ikrasat expands its local presence by establishing offices in Africa commencing with the Ikrasat Sahelian Center in Niger. Queen Elizabeth II visits Ikrasat to view firsthand the work being undertaken by the Institute. ICRASAT-led projects deliver new groundbreaking outcomes for food security across Africa, Southeast Asia, the Middle East, Latin America, and the Caribbean. 1990s, the era of breakthroughs and awards. The 1990s cements ICRASAT's position as a leading agricultural scientific research center with a global reach in improving nutrition and food security. ICRASAT commences research to develop genome maps of sorghum and pearl millet with collaboration from Italy the UK, and the USA. A geographical information system, GIS, that can manage multiple levels of spatially distributed data is set up for rollout across Asia and Africa. ICRASAT scientists breed ICPH8, 
the world's first hybrid pigeon bia with an increased yield of 30%, in partnership with the Indian Council for Agricultural Research ICAR. The variety is released for cultivation. Director Generals Jim Ryan and Shauki Bargaudi receive the King Baudouin Award for high yielding and disease resistant pearl millet and pigeon bia, respectively. The first Women's Farmers' Day is instituted by ICRASAT and ICAR Positioning India at the forefront of championing women's agricultural empowerment. 2000s, the era of new horizons. The recognition of the private sector as valuable research for development partners leads to the formation of the sorghum and pearl millet, hybrid parents research consortia followed by a similar consortium for pigeon pia. Renowned scientist and the 11th president of India, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, visits ICRASAT to inaugurate a genomic facility. ICRASAT's early advocacy for climate resilient crops and climate awareness delivers a Nobel Peace Prize. 2010s, the era of digital and genomic technology. ICRASAT decodes the genome sequence of chickpea, groundnut, and pearl millet in collaboration with global partners. The combined impact of genomic and digital technologies results in fast-tracking crop innovations. This decade sees many world firsts led by the Institute, high oleic acid groundnut, high iron and zinc pearl millet, and sorghum contributing to improved nutrition in infants and children supporting the attainment of the Sustainable Development Goals. Further breakthroughs include fungal disease-resistant and early maturing groundnut, machine-harvestable chickpea, high biomass sorghum for biofuel, drought, and heat-tolerant chickpea. Digital technologies for farmers take off with the establishment of the ICRASATS iHub, with plant disease detection and weather advisory applications developed. The modernization of breeding picks up momentum with the digitalization of ICRASATS breeding programs. Advanced rapid generation to cut breeding cycles, climate change simulation, and the mechanization of sorting and grading processes facilities are initiated. 2020 onwards, the era of new opportunities. The modernization of breeding continues and many bold initiatives are undertaken. Two high oleic acid groundnut varieties developed by ICRASAT and the Indian Council of Agricultural Research Directorate of Groundnut Research are released by the Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi. ICRASAT wins the National CSR Award India twice. The tropical legumes led by ICRASAT and its national partners leads to ICRASAT winning the Africa Food Prize 2021. As of early 2023, 1,230 ICRASAT varieties are released in 81 countries, further extending ICRASAT's global reach and impact. 129,000 accessions from 144 countries are curated by the ICRASAT Gene Bank, and more than 1.5 million samples are distributed to 150 countries. A new strategic plan is developed for the Institute which aligns the work of the Institute more closely to the UN Sustainable Development Goals while bringing together new partnerships and technologies to respond to the most critical needs of the semi-arid regions of Africa and Asia. Looking forward as we look forward to the next 50 years, ICRASAT will continue to deliver the public goods which improve food security and nutrition for those in the drylands through three focus areas. Area 1. Accelerated crop improvement to develop new varieties to counter biotic and abiotic stress and the development of new seed systems and improved seed access. Area 2. Enabling systems transformation, to ensure women and youth are empowered to meaningfully participate, promoting inclusive and sustainable value chains and market access and linkages. Area 3. Resilient farm and food systems, to counter the effects of climate change, water and soil management, and the use of digital and geospatial technologies. As an institute our journey has been marked by one of partnership and innovation. We have come a long way and still have a long way to go to respond to the challenges of tomorrow. Looking forward our work into the future will be framed by climate change and semi-arid tropic agroecology. Nutrition agri-food systems, scaling, south-south collaboration, and gender, because a country does best when everyone is included. The link between the work in our laboratories to improving food security in some of the world's poorest communities is strong, but not always visible, and so we will be working to improve this. ICRASAT is a key actor in the International Year of Millets 2023. For the last 50 years, ICRASAT in partnership with its valued donors and partners has made a significant impact on the lives of millions in the semi-arid regions of Asia and Africa, but more needs to be done. On the 50th anniversary of the Institute, commemorated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. As we stand on this momentous threshold, 
It is important that we look to understand the future challenges for the drylands and to start to develop solutions now. We will use cutting-edge technologies to bring varieties and hybrids to farmers faster and ensure better management of natural resources to help fight climate change and reverse environmental degradation. On its 50th anniversary, ICRISAT rededicates itself to making dryland agriculture resilient, sustainable, and profitable. We invite you to partner with us on the next phase of our exciting journey, as together, we can change the future.